Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to continue with our Blender 2.8 logo text animation and in this part of the tutorial we want to render out our frames. So let's open up Blender 2.8. Hopefully you've been following my last two tutorials and we're going to go to file open. If you remember we finished on version 6 where I changed the font color to like this blue color. So let's open up um, Blender this file and we'll click on the render uh, view so we can see the text here and if you remember in our last tutorial we created this animation sequence and we animated the light as well to give it this sort of effect so now we want to actually take each one of these so each one of these is a frame each single single step here is a single frame we have 90 of them in total so we now we want to render these frames out so we're going to start on the first frame here start on frame one we're going to go to uh, let's see let's click on render first let's just make sure everything's here render samples let's set this to let's try and set it to 256 someone's going to tell me i'm crazy doing that but i'm going to try let's press f12 see how long it takes to render it didn't take too long let's move to a more complex frame something like this press f12 okay so it's taking about four seconds to render so that should be fine and i think the number of render samples will improve the render results if we set this to something very low like 10 in theory it should be not as good quality you see it can render so much quicker at 30 like 0 point is a like fraction of a second right if we increase the render samples it's going to give us a better quality end result so 256 maybe even 512 i don't know let's have a look 512 render that's taking around eight seconds to render that one frame because it's got lots of samples inside of it so it's sampling all the lights and everything and how everything's reflecting it's going to give us a, a much nicer smoother frame single frame so if we've got 90 frames at eight seconds a frame let's just call it nine seconds a frame let's just do some maths here quickly so we've got 90 frames times by 90 times by nine seconds a frame roughly as a hundred and eight hundred and ten seconds in total divide that by 60 that will take 13 minutes and 50 seconds to render all of the frames we could reduce that by half by changing our render setting to half that amount but you know 13 minutes and 50 seconds isn't the longest duration so let's render it out this someone's going to probably tell me that you could have done it at 256 and it would look the same but hey we live and learn right so we're going to leave pretty much everything as it is default here and we're going to go to the output when on output we need to make sure that the render resolution is 1920 by 1080 and set to 100 percent the aspect will leave it as its default uh, the start frame will be one and the end frame will be 90 and there'll be one step for each frame and we're going to set it to 30 frames uh, frame rate that's what we're going to set it as and then we want to set it to we're going to leave it on png files for now so we want to leave it on png here and we want to set it to rgba so it's got an alpha channel in there as well but we don't really need that but that's fine we leave an alpha channel in there let's set the color depth to 16 and let's set the compression to something like 10 percent let's press f12 it's going to take eight seconds to render so let's just see what that frame looks like so where are we We're at 843 so that looks pretty good to me i'm quite happy with the quality there so that's good that's that particular frame we're rendering and then we want to 
go to let's see I haven't done this in a while overwrite file extension placeholder so we're going to click this uh, folder here and then we're going to go to the desktop we're going to go to this blender folder and we want to create another folder in here somehow so we're going to click here create new directory so it's an empty directory and let's call this frames let's just call it frames because these are frames from the render and then we're going to open that folder and then um, we should do it better to just click accept okay so that's where the frames will go let's start it on frame one it doesn't really matter here we see it would start on frame one anyway because we're told it to start on frame one and then let's just see if there's anything interesting in here got the date the render time the frame this all metadata for the file itself okay This all looks fine. Try and get your settings the same as this. And I believe we press Control and F12 to render out all the frames. So let's just see what happens. If you press Control and then F12 on the keyboard, it should be rendering out each frame separately. So we see the first frame. And hopefully it will render out the rest of them. We'll see. If it doesn't, then we've not done something right. So that doesn't look like it's working. Oh no, it did move. Yeah, it's moving, so it's rendering. So control F12 will render out all the frames. It's gonna do one at a time, remember, and it's gonna be around eight to nine seconds a frame. So you can see here all the frames, the time, and uh, somewhere in here it should tell us what frame is on frame six. So that's going to take quite some time to render out. You remember it said like 14, we calculated around 14 minutes. So I'm going to let this render. I'm going to pause the video and we're going to come back once it's fully rendered and we're going to see what the result is. If I minimize this and minimize Blender and we made a folder in here, didn't we? Let's go to this um, here. Frames, we can see the frames being rendered out in here. So we can see this is one frame we can see the frames here getting rendered out. So that's going to take some time. I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once all of the um, 90 frames are rendered. Okay, so Blender's finished rendering out each of the 90 frames. So if we open up this folder, inside here we'll see all 90 frames. Let's just open this up. So here we, see, here we can see the sequence of uh, our 90 frames. If we click on one, we can see the quality is pretty good and we want to render this out now as a image sequence video right so let's open up blender here we can we're back in our viewport if you still see the last frame rendered you just need to close that down so you might see something like let's just wait for this to render you might see something like this the very last frame just close that and you'll be back to your viewport here. Let's go to file, save. Let's go to this option here. So just above this cursor thing here, you wanna click on this option here and then click on video sequencer. Now we're inside the video sequencer and we wanna to go to add image sequence and you wanna to navigate to where you can see all of the frames, right? So that's on my desktop, blender, frames. And then we're going to highlight all of these frames to so select them all, all 90 frames and click add image strip. So we can see the frames down here. This is the image strip and we're going to go to the sequencer and click sequencer and preview this option. And that allows you to see the 
preview at the top and you can right click and scrub across the timeline and then you can see your video or your frames at the top here but we don't want that we want to create a video so we're going to come back over to our render settings so click on output here we're still going to leave everything the same so the same aspect ratio everything will stay the same the frames the end frame all of this stuff up here will stay the same we're going to scroll down to here we're going to click on png and we're going to select ffmpeg video this one here so after we select our option in container we want to select mpeg4 and then we want to make sure the codec is set to h264 and then the output quality there's a few different options in here right but i'm going to select constant bitrate and in here uh the keyframe interval i'm going to set to three and then the max b frame i frames i'm going to set to two here and then the bitrate we're going to set this quite high because we want like pretty good quality right so the bitrate we're going to set to 6400 uh, so now actually we're going to say to 64,000 so set the bit rate to 64,000 set the maximum also to 64,000 and set the so the minimum and the maximum to 64,000 so set these up here like this and we should get a good quality frame uh, video output afterwards so once you've got all the settings done like this we should just press the control key and F12. And now if we just minimize this slightly, if I drag this down, you can see that Blender is going through this film strip and it's creating the video here. So rather than it's trying to do this on the fly, we created the frames first and we're using those frames and now to create the video. And the advantage of this is the video don't come out quite right or we want to change it or increase the bit rate or change the resolution or do anything to it we've still got the original frames so we can run this sequence again without having to encode or re-render all of the frames one by one this is why it's better to use render the frames out individually first because if there's anything wrong with the video render at the end or if we want to change it or if we want to add some audio to it or do anything to it then it's better to have the individual frames rather than um just outputting a video straight away yeah that's why we made the frames first so this is all done it's on 90 frames we can close this minimize this and we'll go into this folder and we should see a video here it's 5.53 meg so it's quite a small file but it's only three seconds right we can open this and now we can see the video play that can be you can put that up for your YouTube channel, you can put it on Facebook, send it on WhatsApp, do whatever you want with it. And you can play around with the settings and you can change the render. You can do loads of stuff now, right? You've got all of the skills and the knowledge to really play around with this. Um, you can do some pretty amazing stuff. You can change the, the font colors, you can change the video, you can change how it ends at the end, right? You know all the skills of how to do all of that. So now it's really your time to go and experiment and play with Blender, play with the settings, all the render settings, all of the, the material settings. Go and experiment with it. But that's our, that's our final clip there. I think it came out pretty well. Considering I haven't used Blender in many, many years, I think we've done a pretty good job. Um, we managed to create our text. We've got all of our effects on there. We've managed to animate the um the light source and we managed to animate the camera pretty easily and we've got our end result so i could use this on my youtube channel if you remember when you watch my youtube channels at the beginning you'll see that dcp spinning around that was made in blender many years ago uh, but this latest version is much easier to understand and much more easy to use so that's the end of this tutorial i hope you find it useful um if you do create a video sequence or you create something and uh, you upload it to YouTube, please put a link to it in the YouTube description. I'll be very interested to see what your one looks like. Um, and I'll be doing some more work in Blender as well. I'm going to learn some more stuff. Um, there's loads of stuff in there. You can create like fire, you can create smoke, you can do particle effects, you can do loads of different stuff. 
it's, it's a really amazing piece of software so finish off this tutorial uh, do put a link in the YouTube description if you get a chance if you upload it to some social media somewhere where I can view it I'll be interested to see it and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial Thank you.